Welcome to It's Art, Let's Talk About It, a podcast sponsored by the Museum of Western Art in Kerrville, Texas. Located in the heart of the Texas Hill Country, the museum is dedicated to the preservation and promotion of the American West, especially through the art of the West. In this podcast series, we'll visit with artists, art collectors, and gallery directors working in the Western art genre. We'll talk about the history and heritage of Western art, and we'll talk about why talking about Western art is so important. I'm Daryl Beecham, the Executive Director of the Museum, and I'll be your host for It's Art, Let's Talk About It. The podcast is a member of the Texas Hill Country Podcast Network. In this episode, Daryl visits with Brandon Bailey, member of the Cowboy Artists of America, about his journey and life in art. I know you'll enjoy this episode. If you haven't done so, please visit the Museum of Western Art in Kerrville, Texas. We'd love to see you there. And we're joined today by our good friend Brandon Bailey, a member of the Cowboy Artist of America. And Brandon, thank, uh, Brandon, thank you for joining us on It's Art. Let's talk about it. Sounds great. Thanks yeah, for having know, me. One of the things that we've known each other a couple of years now, uh, five, gosh, five years now or so. And uh, it's been funny to watch your career just go into meteor status. Did you expect that? I didn't. I've been doing this professionally for probably 16 years, and we've been paying whatever dues it takes. Going to Canada, sleeping into the side of the road, under your car, and so once getting into the Cowboy Artists of America, it just changed my life. And yeah, when I first met you, it was, you were an up-and-comer, and people recognized that. I had several people, Jason Skull among them, say, this is a guy we need to watch, right? This mm-hmm. is a, maybe a future member of the Cowboy Artist of America, and it's when Jason was still a member of, of the CA, yes, and uh, others, Bill Nebaker, uh, Bruce Green mentioned to watch this guy, he's a comer kind of thing. And I first met you when you were teaching at the Western Art Academy here in Kerrville for Shriner University and the Houston Livestock and Rodeo Show. And I thought, yeah, this guy's got good, he's got good skills. And then it seemed like just almost overnight, it took off. Yeah, and what was big for me is, so I got to do a scholarship with the Cowboy Artists of America. They hadn't done it before, where it was a week-long intensive course with one of the members. And it's called the Ann Marion Scholarship in her honor. And they just called me up, Bruce did, and said, who would you like to go study with? And I've always been an admirer of Grant's work and, of course, everybody in the works group. But I really am drawn to Russian Impressionism, and I know Grant, that style. Grant Redden has that same basic basic thing. So I went and stayed, lived at his house with him for a week. Did you really? I learned more in that week than I would have eight years of art school. So this is one of these 16-year overnight success. Yeah, it was just, (laughs) everything clicked. And I think with 16 years, you have that foundation and everything built there. And then it was like, to take you to that next level, there's only so much you can do. And so staying with him and we went to museums and just the way he could talk to me, it just clicked. And he said the same thing. He said, this might not have been beneficial five years before, but where you were at in your career and everything, it just worked. Well, let's talk clicked. about your career because no one starts out a painter. No right. one, you had to develop it. Were you one of those kids like Jack Sorensen said he was, he was selling five, five cent postcards in first grade class to kids for lunch money. Mm-hmm. He was drawing pictures of things when he knew he always wanted to be an artist. And Rachel Brownlee, on the other hand, is a, is a friend of ours and has been on the podcast. She noted that she's always piddled and drawn, but she's in her thirties when Somebody said, hey, you should do this professionally. She, so she's I only been active three years, or you've been active 20. So how'd you get your start? I started out, everybody, drawing and doing all that when I was in elementary school and junior high. And late junior high, I could see I started getting note from some people. I think teachers started buying some of my pieces for five bucks or 10 bucks. And then Wyoming has what's called the conservation. They have hunting pamphlets. So when I was there, they would do elk, deer, and antelope, and then they would have a drawing on the front. And uh, I went into the game and fish one day when I was probably late junior high, kind of a sophomore in high school and said, how do you get your work on there? And the guy <laughs> laughed at me and said, you got to be good, you know? Sure. And yeah. I said, well, can I at least just show, you know, and see what you all think? And so I went in and they put them on the regulations. And then the game and fish had a little show in Wyoming. And I started setting up easels and displaying my work for sale so that was as a high school student as a high school school student yeah Yeah. and and so that was the start and then I went to college I was going to school started rodeoing when I was in college riding bulls and so I was still doing art but that kind of took a side 
to rodeo for a little bit and then that's when I picked up painting as well when I was in college so I never thought I would make a career out of it I didn't think it was possible because I was always told you gotta die before you make so I was going to school to be a teacher and then I happened to win an award with the Buffalo Bill show when right. I was in college right. and sat at Vic Payne's table that night and so my career has been a lot of weird coincidences that it happened to just everything meant to happen and I started showing in his gallery I'd go in and paint I just and then started getting in different shows and galleries and I had about a year of school left and I thought if I'm going to do this as a profession I don't want to have a degree I want I don't want anything to fall back on I want this to be if it gets tough I don't want to say teach for a while and so you maybe, burned your ships and went, so I burned went, my ships and just went, went all the in got married and <laughs> became our sole provider all, all of that happened within a year span of that of dropping out of college yeah talk about marriage real quickly Priscilla yep that's my and, wife uh, Priscilla yeah and, and she's great we've gotten to know her over the years and she's one of those if I have a question sometimes I can't reach you I'll call Priscilla <laughs> <laughs> which is a real standard she, in the she's industry the half for sure. she's she's got the business sense about everything but um, you just you started draw, always drawn to the western scene the western motif I was growing up in Cheyenne I would say it was more into wildlife my goal was to capture what we had seen hunting that day with my dad so yeah. he'd always instilled that in me and growing up in Cheyenne you can't help but be into the west yeah. we have the Cheyenne Frontier Day sure. rodeo and so it was always riding horses as a kid and doing but not a lot of ranch stuff and then when I got into rodeo that's when the west took my life over so I always tell people if I hadn't ridden bulls I wouldn't be a western artist it was those experiences that I started drawing and getting to know the western culture and the western right, people right. and that's when that big interest took so it was wildlife and then it transitioned into more western but I did some other stuff like go to Africa so I've done African wildlife and I think for me my art is always focused on experiences I've never tried right, to paint right. or draw something that I hadn't experienced and so when I went to Africa doing African wildlife, seeing them in their natural environment, that was always important to me. And it was the same with the West. And so I, I wanted to try to tell the story as truthful as possible. That was always important to me. It's, it's always fun to sit down and talk to people about art because it seems like your art has, as it should, it's just gotten better. Every single painting seems to be growing in its, its brush strokes and its, its technique and stuff. And is that because you're studying with some really good and you're surrounding yourself with a really good artist? It is. And for me, the most exciting part about being a member in the CA is that I always equated it to like the best bull riders when Lane Frost and Tuff Hedeman and them were riding. Sure. All the best bull riders rode down the road together. They were traveling partners. And so it's like that greatness rubs off on you. And being in the CA, you're the underdog as far as talent and skill, and all of a sudden you get thrown in with, you're hanging next to Martin Greeley and Bruce Green, right. and the best Western artists to ever live, and not just Western artists, but artists. It, it makes you step it up, and I think I've maybe pushed myself a lot harder than I maybe normally would have. And so um, I guess to answer your question, it's, you know, being in the group and being around that. And then, you know, we, we're really good about you can call each other and get a, advice. And so we're always on the phone saying, hey, do you mind checking out this piece? And Tell what me can what, I do uh, to make what this good wrong? Yeah. Yeah. What, what fixes this? Yep. Yeah, and they'll say foreshorten that arm a little oh, bit sure. or do something like this and it'll make it work. Yeah, and I've if you're open lot. to that, and which I've always been when I'll take criticism from anybody, it could be just someone, random person that really hasn't been an art per se, but they see something and bring it to my attention. I've always been open to whatever it does to make a painting better. And I think I've really focused my I guess goal is to just be the best painter I could be and so, so people always ask me what's your favorite painting you've done and I always say it's the next one. No, no it, that's a standard answer in the art <laughs> it's business. It's the one I haven't messed up yet. Yeah. We, for those of you playing along at home if you go out to the website museumofwesternart.com museumofwesternart.com and go out to the podcast page there on the podcast if you're getting it from Apple or some other source and not at our website you can see photographs of Brandon's work picture of Brandon and Priscilla We'll put all of that out there on the website for people to, to play along. Brandon, let's just get it out of the way. If people want to know more about your work, more about you, website that they go to is? Just Google Brandon Bailey or my website's bbaileyart.com. Social media, Instagram is probably, I would say I update that more than anything. It's okay. in Instagram and Facebook is a glimpse into our life. I show a lot of stuff from the studio. How many followers do you have yet? 
Oh, I don't know, like 3,000. I'm not that good at it. So. <laughs> I was talking to Scott Christensen the other day, the landscape painter. He's got 63,000 yeah. followers. <laughs> oh, now you answer all of your, your emails if you've got that many, or your Instagram. You yeah, know, and I'm post. not as tech savvy. Being younger, I'm 39 now, and it's I grew up in kind of the Instagram and Facebook era, but still I've tried to remove myself from it just a little bit to focus on the... When are you finding time to paint? Because, man, you're busy. Right. This show, the Museum of yep. Western Art Roundup Show, this is your fourth year. Yeah, now? fourth year. Doing fourth the show. year that you've done the show for us. And you're also in the Briscoe. Yep, just got into This is my first year with the Briscoe show. You were in the Russell. Yep, did that for several years. Two so. shows that I'm f- very familiar with, obviously. But you've just recently been accepted. Can we talk about the new one? Yeah, the question. For the West Idle at George. Idle George Museum has just invited you to be a part of their, you know, their offerings. Yeah. When are you finding time to paint? Are you just painting at two o'clock in the morning? And It's the tough part when I've, it's been an interesting thing because I think I would have had the opportunity to, you know, just keep cranking out and cranking out the way things have been busy. And I've had to pull myself back a little bit and just try to do the best work I can do. And so I've limited myself to how many paintings I put out or how much I paint. I'm really just trying to focus on getting better. And so I haven't viewed it like, oh, you have this demand now. I've been just treating it like each painting is its own thing. I've been trying to get better. We recently moved out into the country west of Scotts Bluff. There's Native American artifacts out there. We're right on the Oregon Trail. There's You'll be walking along and there'll be a bison rib bone sticking out of a sand wall. Just so much history there. And I've been really trying to focus on that aspect of my art, not just so much the painting, but the quality of life, walking out, walking in the steps of Native Americans, of pioneers. And I just feel, you know, that needs to be a more important facet of my work, not just so much, you know, how many paintings can I do or how fast can I paint, but I've been wanting to just treat each piece like it needs the revenants and respect that it needed. But you're doing five, usually five to seven major works for the Cowboy Artist of America yeah. for their show every year. There's, you know, three to five for the Briscoe. And there's Cheyenne trade or the whatever they call that yeah. show. I, I can't even remember. Three for us. It just seems like there's a lot of work. It is. That you, know, you have to produce. And, and, and I say that tongue in cheek because it still comes down to you have five paintings to have done by so and so date. Right. And yeah, it's just that's all I do. That's all I do is paint. People, I, I don't know how to change the oil in my car or truck. I paint. <laughs> that, that's what I do. I've been blessed to have a wife that is very supportive of what I do and always has been. And so she takes care of a lot of the loose ends so I can, you know, really get in the mindset. And We've talked to that uh, with artists a lot about that, especially male artist men who are in the painting world uh, Todd Connor a fellow CA member was in yesterday and uh, his wife Mimi business side of it James Muir the famous sculptor Linda is who you call Bill Nebaker a CA member if you want something from Bill when you want to really get to Bill you got to call it go through Mary mm-hmm. right it's good to have that partnership Yep. that so many have a business partner and a spouse that's supportive of the work. Well, and we're going to explore that more. We used to have a, or still do, but have a building in downtown Scotts Bluff. And Priscilla had her, she's such an artist and entrepreneur. So she right. has She's her, an artist in her own. Yeah, right. she does sculpting. I see some lovely florals yeah, that she's done. Yeah, paintings, yeah. does a lot of pottery work. And so she has a boutique, but she has that flair for starting businesses. And so she, we were living downtown, and so we had an apartment upstairs. I had a studio downstairs, and we thought, we got this beautiful space. Why are we not utilizing it? So she created a, like a Seltz coffee and high-end teas and just a boutique thing. But once we moved out into the country, she's been having to do that still. And the way the career has been going, I, I, for the first time, I feel like it's been harder for me to be able to fill out all the paperwork and do all this. Right. So I think she's going to take a more proactive approach. But I've have to set up an easel down there at the coffee shop and yeah. start painting, doing demos there. I used to. That was my studio for several years. I didn't have windows. And so for seven years or eight years of painting, I, I had no windows. And so to move out into the country where now I have two huge right. windows, right. it's been a it's been a learning curve just to look out and see wild turkeys walking around or deer so that's been a lot of fun a couple of things impressed me early on in in my experience with you and our our friendship is number one i I first met your dad yogi and what a great guy he is and a representative of your work and so he's a big i know he's proud of your work and then the second thing was one of the things that kind of came oh by the way i chase storms for for fun tornado chaser 
Storm Chaser. Yep. Talk about that as a passion that you have, but it shows up a lot in your art. It does. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I see that in your art, these big clouds and wonderful, the one we had in the 40th anniversary show, Little Night Music, a herd of cows being driven in a storm in the background with these massive lightning bolts coming down and stuff. Talk about that, that one passion, how it feeds the other. Yeah, it, it's just been, it's one of those kids growing up. And are you crazy? If you lost sure. your mind, you're chasing tornadoes, I'm right? sure with the bull riding and the storm chasing, there's probably there an adrenaline a correlation junction? there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, of course, seeing Twister as a kid and growing up in Cheyenne, you, you'd hear a tornado siren go off. And so there was always that passion. But what happened was cell phones with a technology for 10 years ago, you'd have to have all the gadgets on your vehicle. I can chase with the cell phone. So I just started doing research and learning how to form forecast severe weather and tornadoes and just got to where I, I would go spot and make calls to the weather service and still be like a sky worn spotter which has been fun but then I realized not only is this fun but it can be such an aspect of my work and talking before painting your subject and knowing it well being out in around thunderstorms you learn that they have anatomy they have a certain look about them and like a horse or a cow yeah or, it's it, 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 and it and it gives me something in my heart that passion every time i see one with nighttime lightning in the east after severe weather it's just such an aspect of prairie life and to be able to create that but to be in the storm too has been our goal is to try to get within several hundred yards of a tornado and um, you chase and my wife and I were talking about it. I'm like, how come you don't go like chasing with me ever? And she said, well, you drive nine hours for five minutes of excitement. That, that doesn't sound too fun. <laughs> but those trips, and a lot of it's with my dad. He's my best friend still. And he, he'll he go with me and chase and I'll be on the iPad. I remember we were in Kansas one year and driving and it was a tornado at night beside us. You could see the warning and all the radar and I'm looking at it and I'm like, dad, how fast are we going? He said, about 50 and he's like why and i'm doing the math of how fast the storm's coming to us and i'm like you need to kick her down to about 75 and i see the look on his face he's like, what did you get us into and we need to get out of here <laughs> we need to yeah. get out of here but it's that fun when i think for me what i've enjoyed is just seeing small town america there's towns and places we would have never gone off the beaten path had we not been storm chasing and so you get to see that and and i tend to paint native tribes from these areas right. like kansas nebraska Oklahoma, the Texas area, sure. you get to see the same sites they've seen. And it, it's, there's so much to America that's off the interstate. And for me, storm chasing. Is One of the goals is to get close to a storm that almost came really too very close to, to your home yeah. recently. Last year, we had a workshop scheduled when you called and said, I might need to not do the workshop because we've just been through a tornado yeah we did right through in home yeah right? and, and i've never seen anything like it so scott's bluff so that day started out i was mowing the yard and just around and i could see it was real gloomy that morning and cool which is a lot of time the moisture has come and that's the ingredients you need and then all of a sudden the sun started coming out which when you have those two things the sun is what gets things fired up i thought wow you could just see something was going to happen and so i drove west from our place 70 miles to Chugwater, Wyoming, and was there as the storm formed. And I literally followed it and counted nine tornadoes from Chugwater. And as we were driving, and what's another fun thing about storm chasing is there's 200 other storm chasers out there too. So you're in a traffic jam with 200 people. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Which is scary because I would pull off and photograph the tornado and then all of a sudden it's coming at you and you can't get back on the road because it's like, a concert let out or something so there's you hope someone lets you in so you can keep running you're caught in it but so i followed those storm chasers literally to our front yard up in the wildcat hills in nebraska down dirt roads and so my dad and mom were there to watch our animals while i went to go teach this workshop and i've finally called my mom and said you need to go to the basement and my dad freaked out because i've never done that if i tell you to go to the basement you serious something's happening and it, and it was coming to our house and scott's bluff actually was in a tornado emergency and then so that tornado just missed our place but we got the hail and it did damage and then downtown we have that commercial building and we got tennis ball sized hail and it did quite a bit of tornado damage in scott's bluff itself so it was so it's like the dog chasing the car what are you gonna do if you catch it yeah what you do? you caught the tornado that yeah and i was calling priscilla because she had you know her store going that day and it was a tornado emergency which is super rare they never issue those unless there's a preeminent threat and i remember calling 911 a couple times to say i just saw this big cone tornado it's 
14 miles west of Scott's Bluff and the storm's not weakening. People need to know that this is coming. And that's been the fun part about this is it's not just about the adrenaline and all the fun of seeing it, but yet you're warning people, you're being an active member in the community as well. So I've really kind of embrace that part of it talk about because one of the things that we missed doing that year was the workshop and we're going to reschedule that and do another workshop with brandon bailey cowboy artist of america member but talk about the impact workshops and teaching has had on your career and i know you were involved for a number of years couple of years with the uh, the shriner university's camp the summer month-long intense summer camp for students yep talk about workshops and what they mean because there'll be people out there listening who are fans of your work young artists who are saying how do i get started and i know one of the big ways that i think you you promote is workshops and education yeah Yeah. and just kind of segue off that if someone's interested in going to art school i would almost recommend foregoing that and finding workshops with someone that you admire an artist that you admire because with the workshop experience a lot of times you're getting it from someone that's doing it, that's a professional in the field right. and kind of can relate to you and push you in that direction. And I go into school to be a teacher. That was always a passion of mine. But I think for the workshops, it's been great to be able to answer questions, to be able to, you can, it's a smaller setting usually, and you can tailor. I, I end up learning a lot just by teaching them at the workshop. I'll find myself telling somebody, hey, you need to do this. And then I'm thinking, heck, I'm not doing this. Why am I not doing this? So it makes me think, what can I I do to get better and so it's that constant of circulation of knowledge and coming yeah back I, I know it's a constant educational cycle that you're yeah. in but talk about some of those people that you mentioned Grant Redding Redden talk about others who you've learned from and taught helped pursue promote your career with. yeah early on Chris Navarro took me under his wing and Chris I, is great yeah, sure so yeah. I did a lot of stuff with him and then and then Dusty Payne got me he said you need to attend this workshop in Fort Davis Texas and this was I think 2018 when they had the trail ride in Fort Davis and right. so I yeah. went down there and got to meet Bruce Green and Martin Greeley the first time and that's when I started was painting from life next to Bruce Green and those guys and um, the cool thing about it is if you have try, it was like rodeo. If you had try and effort, man, those guys would do anything for you. They would give you the world. So what's your recommendation to that young person out there who's thinking about becoming an artist full time? Just pursue it. If you have the passion and come to the workshop, I always say my studio is an open studio. Anybody's welcome anytime to come. And I think with a lot of these artists, if you have the try and the effort and the passion, they'll help you. And I, I know she won't mind me mentioning her name on air season, Hackney is a local, I said Kerrville area artist who, and I got here in 2019, started bugging me about being in the Roundup show. And Susan, you're not there, right? It's been, this is what you need to do. And I think at some point she met you and there for a while, you made that statement to her, give me a call. And so she's been sending you works for critique and she's been talking to you on the phone and, and through the internet. And you're willing to do that. Yeah, people. and it's exciting to see that. And that's all it takes. Someone that has the passion to grow, that that's where it's at. And that's where you get the the passion to pursue it. And I've, been, I've enjoyed seeing her growth. And, and last know. year was her first year in our show, the Roundup Exhibition and Sale. And she sold out, yeah. which was great. It's, it's been great. And I helped her select the art that was going to be in the show. And this year it's been what do you think of this and what do you think of that? And Gibby, it's, it's a constant kind of thing that she's trying to really learn. And one little piece, I said, take that out, all that negative space and mm-hmm. tighten it down and make it a smaller painting. It's, 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 and, and she did it. And then she came to me, it was yesterday, day before, and she said, you know, you were spot on, man. It was, it was the great advice. And But it's, is it learning from people who've been there ahead of you? Yeah, and the best advice, that's it. Just having that attitude to grow and get better and be receptive to criticism. I know it's tough, especially for younger artists and myself included. You put so much heart and passion into it, you almost feel like it's an attack on you a little bit if you get criticized. (laughs) But if you can get past that point and you realize that they're just there to help you to make the piece better and they have the best intentions behind it. That's, I started really growing as an artist when I was really open to being criticized and to make this a better painting it was no reflection on me as a person or it was just like here's the formula here's the ingredients this painting let's say it's like bread and it's lacking salt here's we put salt in here and it's better it's almost we're going to give you these foundations and steps and you just keep building and building and i think for me that was the best advice i can say is just be humble be really humble with this because it's a profession and 
a pursuit that you never feel like you've ever created a good piece of art. At least I haven't. It's that pushing to try to grow and get better. And then, like I said, the next one's my favorite because that's the one I haven't messed up. Or yeah, I hear that a lot from artists. It's the perfect yeah. painting. When in, in the pursuit of doing a perfect painting, whatever that means, but in my mind, it's okay, the next one, I'm finally going to create this perfect painting and it never happens. Were you surprised at how quickly uh, you evolved into this, the Cowboy Artist of America? Mm -hmm and was offered membership at, at the CA level? Yeah, it was unbelievable. I remember Bruce Green calling me up and saying, I want you to submit a portfolio and take it to trail ride. And once you get the votes for that, then if you get enough votes, then you're invited to bring works, original works to Fort Worth where the show is. And then you get interviewed and voted on. And I just figured the night before, Priscilla took a picture of me. We were at a restaurant when we were in Fort Worth, and I just sitting there looking at the table. She's like, "You gotta, you just gotta eat." I remember I, that moment. I know what's going on tomorrow, yeah. and yeah. when I thought, "There's no way I'm gonna make it in." And there are a lot of artists in the CA who've been in for a number of years now who took five or six times to to get voted upon because it is a it's an exclusive club, and that's. What's the future of the Cowboy Artist of America? It's looking bright right now. We've, like I said, we got four new members. The show's been doing phenomenal. I think our mission and our statement has stayed strong. The original members that started this had such a great vision that all right. we got to do is just be stewards of it. And I view myself as a steward of the CA. My whole intention is what can I do best for the Cowboy Artist of America, not what's best for Brandon Bailey. And right. The year that I started here at the Museum of Western Art in 2019, that fall, I went to Fort Worth to the Cowboy Artist of America membership meeting as an invitee, and we made a pitch to bring that show here to, to Kerrville. And I think everybody was very pleased with that proposal. They were happy with the thought of coming to Kerrville. And that night, the Saturday night, you guys did one point, you know, three million dollars. And I'll never forget thinking to myself Sunday morning, they're going to stay right where they are. <laughs> it seems, seems to be a model that's working. I'm not a huge fan of it because I like to work being up six weeks or seven weeks so people can see it, the public can see it, that two night sale. But you think that works well for the CA? Yeah, it just seems to be, especially working with the Fort Worth Stock Show. And I think it because it doesn't follow that traditional art sale. And I'm not, I'm not complaining. I would love to have the show at, at the Museum of Western Art. I think it would be beneficial for both groups, but I, you can't fight success, right? You guys have done that now four years. Yeah, and just the years. percentages, I think, are the mid to high 70s as far as and, arts. is kind of unheard of and, in the art business. Yeah, you know, we did 63% last and year. And that's phenomenal. And that's phenomenal. Yeah, that's but we're selling it at a little lower level and everything's in the $5,000 range versus some of the works at the CA show that are in the 15 to 20, 30, 40, Forty, fifty thousand dollar range. Some of Martin Greeley's pieces, of course, go higher than that. And Howard Turpening when he was selling, but it's hard to, to fuss with that successful model. It seems to be working for the cowboy artist, and I'm all about success that you know happens to, yeah, to a and, group. And the members, you know, that have made the decisions and have made great decisions, and I just was lucky enough to come along when things are great. And, so I'm hoping to do my part to just keep pushing that. And yeah. but, I, but our future seems bright. With the Joe Beeler Foundation, we have a lot of... Talk about outreach with the Joe Beeler Foundation. I yeah, mean, that's so an important... We have a lot of educational opportunities and scholarships that we provide for younger artists. And I know the CA always has prided themselves in the next generation, especially with Western art, because you don't know, right. you know what western art's going to be like 20 years from now 10 years from now or 50 years from now and so we're, I, I think always looking for the younger generation and how can we instill our passion and meaning and our principles of cowboy work into the next generation and with the joe beeler foundation we've been able to offer scholarships put on workshops through imagination fort worth and do a lot of stuff with kids junior high school kids and that's been a really rewarding part for me to be a part of that. The Joe Beeler Foundation is that educational opportunity and just creating the next generation of not only artists, but people that appreciate the arts has been, yeah, phenomenal. So the future looks bright for the CA, and I think the future looks especially bright for Brandon Bailey. <laughs> and that's exciting to watch somebody's career take off and, boy, hit stratospheric kind of kind of things. What's next for you? What do you think? You just keep on grinding it out, doing it, learning every day? What? Yeah, just keep on. I, I guess I've been, when I first started, I was really a lot more into figuring out how to market because I didn't know where do you put your work? What shows do you do? So that was the mindset. And then just before I had gotten in the CA, I made my business plan just to be the best painter I could be and get better at painting and forgo everything else. And so for me, the future 
all I can think about is trying to do the best work I can do. I've yeah. also seen some sculpture you've put out. Yeah. Sculpting now. Getting into sculpting. I did taxidermy when I was in college. I had a taxidermy business to help me get through college. And so I think that foundation of anatomy and doing all that just... I progressed into sculpture. I, I just enjoy it. I almost have more fun sculpting than I do painting because it's like you get to play with clay. And <laughs> Our friend Eric Slocum said uh, he looked at a piece you cranked out at one of these little workshops, right? It was the Western Art Academy thing, and, and he whispered to me, I hope he doesn't go into sculpting because he doesn't want the competition. <laughs> well, that's right? nice I mean, of him to say. You know, because yeah, Eric's one of the great sculptors, yeah. but he says, God, I hope he doesn't go into sculpting. I don't yeah, have to fun. I don't know I don't what have to I'm compete doing. with that, right? <laughs> I think sometimes not knowing what you're doing, maybe you get a unique look. Or like I, I did a big sculpture in Cheyenne, and I didn't know how to build this armature, so I just went and bought ten rolls of tin foil and started making it look like a buffalo and put clay on top. Did you really? So maybe I don't. And, and luckily, Jason Skull and I've had others give me advice along the way, and Chris right. Navarro will give me pointers. But everybody's been really open to it. I just the way the painting has and getting in the shows, it's like I find myself. I haven't sculpted in a year now, and you just like you said, time is such a valuable thing, and yeah. when you lo- loom in already i've got 15 20 paintings that i have to have done at certain times between now and october you realize time flies right but i want to make more time about that i don't want to forget being an artist because i got into this to be an artist it wasn't necessarily a business for me i never set out to make money with my art i just had hoped that money would follow because i loved doing what i was doing and and hopefully it's following yeah it is we've been blessed and and I, I still want to hold that true. What's more important at the end of the day is the art. That's more important than anything because yeah. that's what's going to be your legacy. It's the best work that you can do is what's going to speak far after you're gone. So it's not about how much paintings can I crank out and how much money can I make. It's about doing meaningful work and what paintings are going to have. And you're developing quite a, a really good collector base. There's a lot of folks out there who they've called us and said, hey, listen, how many paintings is Brandon going to have? And you have images yet. And yeah, I, sh- I ship them images real quickly, shoot them images. And they're writing back going, can we bid on that? Can we buy that now? So that's exciting to see the work being appreciated. It's weird. I'm still having a hard time grasping it because I remember doing shows. We would do one in particular called Safari Club in Las Vegas. And Priscilla and I were talking about this. Gosh, I think it cost us 10 grand to be there. And we didn't sell one piece. When that hurts, when you're just scraping by to get there. And then I remember us in the hotel room waking up at three in the morning with not had selling nothing the last day before the show was over and not having much money in your bank account and wondering, have I lost my mind? What are we going to do? When she would always kind of calm me down and say, it's going to be okay. It'll work out. And then it always worked out. It always seemed to be, we were just provided for, we were blessed enough to go there. So to have this where it's coming at you faster and faster, I I, I feel blessed to have had to work hard for 10, 15 years and get kicked in the teeth a little bit and learn the ropes because I don't take any of this for granted like bull riding isn't it it is you yeah. just it doesn't hurt as much <laughs> it's the same way to make a living but your, yeah, ego, you maybe. your ego gets beat up a little more but, but you yeah. know but no it's been so i don't take any of it for granted i'm so blessed to have people like you said if they're calling in i i, I don't get that i'm like oh, people really like it that yeah, much they do you know? and yeah. so I, that's, that's good to, good to know yeah. it doesn't make sense to me so i'm just i, I guess i get lost in my own world at, at my easel and so it, it still fascinates me that i can do what i love and put paint on a canvas and it resonates with And you have three works in the Museum of Western Arts Roundup, this 41st annual Roundup that held this year in April, well, going forward in April. You'll have three works in this show and people will see them on our website and our catalog. They can make bids on those and actually put their name in to purchase those and we'll be glad to help them out. But you're in the Briscoe Show, the Museum of Western Arts Show. Yep. Cowboy Artists of America show, the yep. Idol Jorg this fall. And then doing some stuff, a show with Stuart Johnson in May. Sure. So I've got to have a couple pieces for that when I get home. And the Cheyenne Frontier Days, that's always been the hometown. That was my first kind of real art show right. that I was ever invited to. And that was... Yeah, we were among the first big shows years that you, ago. Yeah. yeah. So, right. so I remember you coming with your dad and down there and on all shucks kind of moment. I don't know if well, I'm, I couldn't believe it. And know. then <laughs> they did the award that night. And right. It's like you never you, you don't you never know you're going to get your name called. You don't expect it. And so when you hear it, it's like a double take. Really. Yeah, I remember the look on your face. She said, "Really, me?" Like, uh, and I was yeah. like, "Man, there were so many other better works in here. I couldn't believe." No, they really <laughs> that night. The, the, that was among the best. I so. just couldn't believe it. But yeah, it's just a humbling experience. But yeah. Uh, uh, my time with the Museum of Western Art was 
I think influential too for me getting in the CA because and you, you know, and I've talked you're going to be doing a, a major work for our permanent collection we've, we've put together a deal for that and so we're excited well, it's such about a special it. museum and you all have been so supportive I really don't know that I would be in the CA without coming here first and getting the history and feeling all that that we walk through these halls here and, and you've got your you got your handprint boot print and signature out there in concrete now yeah it, it's been yeah. when it's just Jux, i think that's that, where you were going to bury your ashes <laughs> that's where we're going to bury it <laughs> in but, 50 years yeah i won't I, be here but i remember before ever getting invited to apply walking through this museum here and seeing the works by the great ca the garden where the boot prints are and without that i don't know that i just feel like it propelled me maybe to work harder to we're looking at a workshop next year perhaps yep. get that done now that maybe the tornadoes have subsided a little yeah. bit there in scotts bluff and we'll find that week where people can can come and learn from the great brandon bailey cowboy yeah. artist of america yeah definitely and That's i know there's exciting. some other cas i think jack's doing a workshop jack's doing a workshop this summer we're going to have todd connor probably before much longer awesome. so there'll be a lot of cowboy art we're doing six workshops a year now six to seven workshops that's really our mission as well to have the great artists teach great workshops yeah and what a great place to have workshops too the museum here is so beautiful if you haven't had a chance to come here and check it out and if you've not joined us in the beautiful hill country for those of you listening on the podcast in new york city you're welcome to come anytime and get to see what the hill country looks like and it's a beautiful place to be and we've got a great museum yeah it was the first time my wife had seen it we pulled in this morning and she's wow she just was in awe. Has she not been here? She'd never been here. But till, till today. Till today. We and need so, to yeah. show her around, give her the grand tour. Yeah, yeah, she came in and she just couldn't believe it. You yeah, know, we get that it, a lot from most, people. It's one of the most beautiful museums I've ever seen. We get that a lot from people. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an architectural fun. wonder in, in itself, and the work is fabulous. It's here, worth you know, just so. making a trip to Kerrville just to come to the museum. Well, we appreciate you saying yeah, that. For sure. Our guest today has been Brandon Bailey, Cowboy Artist of America member, painter, and good friend of the Museum of Western Art. And Brandon, it's, it's a pleasure having you on It's Art, Let's Talk about it thank you yeah an honor to be here and and it's an honor to continue to work with you and good luck in your career and man let's sell some art let's do it let's do it thanks (laughs) appreciate it appreciate it man and we're clear i hope i didn't say nothing too stupid we hope you've enjoyed this episode of it's art let's talk about it a production of the museum of western art in kerrville texas we hope you'll visit the museum in person we're located at 1550 bandera highway in kerrville texas Find out more about us by going to www.museumofwesternart.com. And we hope you'll join us next time for It's Art, Let's Talk About It. The podcast is produced by the Texas Hill Country Podcast Network.